a KQED television production. Another umami bomb. <laughs> umami bomb. <laughs> Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by Total Wine and More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, and Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Natural and engineered stone, designer tiles. IRG has over 250 choices and 10,000 slabs. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin and at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check Please Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. Now we have three guests and each one recommends one of their favorite spots and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, longshoreman and radio show host Stephen Parker loads ships at the Oakland Dock and surfs the airwaves from his Richmond studio. But he'll come ashore any day to take his palate to uncharted restaurants. And Sam Wee recently graduated with a master's in international studies. Even though she no longer hits the books, she hunts down restaurants and approaches global cuisine with scholarly analysis. But first, stay-at-home mom and interior designer Marley Stevens factors in form, function, and style to every facet of her life. Her place is recognized for its distinguished decor as well as its flourishing flavors. The menu features an elevated interpretation of Northern Thai cuisine with an aura of whimsy. In San Francisco, we're going to Farmhouse Kitchen. So farmhouse kitchen here is more like, you know, a different type beyond the expectation. I'm Chef Kesem, you know, most of people call me Pop, and I'm the CEO of Farmhouse Kitchen. We try to present the Thai street food, which is touch more to the northern part, which is Chiang Mai, Chiang Rai. The reason I named Farmhouse Kitchen, because I try to bring back my own memory with my grandmother. She always taught me how to cook good food. I grew up with the countryside. The name farmhouse in Thai is more like get away from the city. So the services here is more like friendly, hip, uh, energy. I try to represent Thai farmer market, which is always at night. You'll see like a lot of stuff, crispy roti, pad thai, and what I try to bring back here to San Francisco. I want to show it out the grasshopper, the silver worms that make you guys so surprised. The taste is more like protein and crunchy, you know, and sometimes people scare, but trust me, you just be yourself, scream, try to take a bite of like the grasshopper. You're so surprised, but that moment make you feel happy, that's all. All right, Marley, let's talk a little bit about the feeling you get when you walk into Farmhouse Kitchen. So it's contemporary in the way that it is decorated in the restaurant. There's an art installation on the wall and there's 99 faucets. And I asked about it mm -hmm. and uh, one of the servers explained that water in Asian culture can often mean flowing good luck. And so it, the water is like wealth flowing into the restaurant. Mm -hmm. And what they do there is they take really high quality ingredients and really fresh ingredients and they combine that all with really potent flavors. I think each dish really has its own identity. And when I go, I love their Penang Nua. 
they use a slow braised beef short rib that is very slow cooked, which results in a um, very tender, moist beef. Mm -hmm. And then they coat the whole thing in a Penang curry sauce, mm -hmm. and it's served with blue rice and broccolini. We're using the blue flour, which is called in Thai um, dog and chan. We soak with hot water overnight to get the bright blue color, and then use that liquid to steam the rice. The blue color represents the richness. I did not expect it to look the way that it did. I love mm. the colors. Mm. And one thing that really stood out for me is their 24 hour beef noodle yes. soup. As that was it was on my list too. It was on your yeah, list. I love it. <laughs> when the bowl of soup came to me, I thought I found the Flintstone bowl. <laughs> because it was slanted yeah. and it could not be contained in the bowl. The bone had just chunks of meat on it. It was fork tender. Mm. And I love the egg noodles they used. Mm -hmm. It's kind of similar to, I would say, like the wonton noodles you can get at a Chinese restaurant. Sure. The broth, it was just soaking up in those noodles. Mm -hmm. Stephen, what did you start well, with? When we came came in, we uh, immediately were presented with a fried pumpkin dish mm -hmm. that had this mm -hmm. sauce that was so sweet and so delicious that you could put it on a tire and it would taste delicious. <laughs> that, kind of, that kind of sauce. And I did uh, ask for more of the pumpkin uh, and the sauce that they had. And they were so kind to bring me some more. It was so delicious. And the flavors in the sauces just really made the night for me. Oh, good. Um, I didn't much enjoy the flank steak, but I did enjoy uh, some of the, uh, the salmon that I had. They came with this thing of the, the server right. over his shoulder with the two buckets, mm -hmm. and it, yeah. it was just really, really classy the but way they, they really did it. They really wanted to bring authentic Thai yes. food yes, and did. the street foods, including bugs. Did y'all have the bugs? I didn't oh, have right. the bugs. I not, I <laughs> <laughs> but you can't you help can. but not want whatever they're hawking. Yes. So you're always captivated by the creativity, mm -hmm. which you don't find at other hole in the wall, mom and pop style mm -hmm. Thai restaurants. Now tell me some more dishes that you order. The herbal rice salad. So there's coconut, there's peanuts, there's lime, there's cilantro. I mean, seriously, like 10 or so ingredients. And it makes for a very full rounded salad that's crunchy. Good, and what about the green curry? I think the flavor of the green curry was spot on. I could taste the lemongrass, the coconut milk aroma. It was just in my face. I love that. The only one critique I would make about it is I wish it was a little bit thicker because mm. I love curry that just glops over my rice and I just didn't get that with that specific thing but overall I really did enjoy the meal. Next time you got to try the crickets and the worms when they yes. come around. Oh my gosh. With a glass of rosé <laughs> right. or two and then you know you really get the feel <laughs> of street food in Thailand. Chicken. Right. Or the fried chicken. <laughs> there the you fried go. fried chicken dish that I, I think chicken. most people know them for. Mm -hmm. It has a crunchy breading of course but the chicken is thinly cut and pounded and it stays moist. And then it's served with a yellow curry and then there's a honey. Mm -hmm. So if you get a bite of the fried chicken mm -hmm. with the crunch of the crust, oh, wow. dipped in that side of curry and then drizzled with a little bit of honey, <laughs> Yeah. I will be one She over. likes to compose her plate. Yeah, yeah. Right, right? <laughs> She's got a bite of this and a bite of this and a bite of this. Right, I love it. All the flavors. That and way. what about chicken yeah. wings? The chicken wings were um, very tiny and they were a small and you portion. Like big. I, I like big, I go big. Um, a small portion and, and kind of overcooked, and so um, I didn't really enjoy the appetizer of the chicken wings. Uh, but one thing I noticed too was that they kind of serve you by committees. Yes, one, one person comes, another person comes, and I'm really kind of a guy that really is into service. That's part of the thing that I enjoy most about going out and dining. You know, getting to know my waiter, my waiter telling me what's going on. So I didn't have that experience. All right, Marley, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. Farmhouse is sure to be your next destination for elevated Thai cuisine in the city. All right, and Stephen? I'll give it another try. It wasn't my best dining experience, but next time maybe it'll be better. And Sam? It's fun, it's Thai flair, it's a night out in the city, and if nothing else, you can bring a Flintstone bone home as a souvenir. <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Farmhouse Kitchen, it's located on Florida at 19th Street in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-814-2920. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30.
a gathering place for local sports fans, the menu at Stevens Pick features flavorful comfort food. If sports aren't your thing, get on down to the dance floor or pick up a mic to karaoke the night away. In Oakland at OVO, Oakland's very own tavern and eatery. OVO started from a dream. Our foundations are very similar and close. We actually grew up together across the street. Trevelyan Adenandis. Gordon Tillman. We're co-owners of Oakland's very own Tavern and Eatery. We came up with that name because we wanted to have something for us, by us. And what we strive to do here at OVO is to make people feel part of the community, almost as if it's their own spot. Right here. There we go. Our back of the house staff, um, we have some really good chefs there. Can I get a little more juice in my jambalaya? The dry rub, that's one of my signatures. I'm the only one to make it. <laughs> good. Cell phones have taken away the intimacy in friendships, relationships. So we like, how can we bring people together? So we make this fish bowl. It comes with four straws. That should be shared by two to three or four people. It's just trying to bring friends to interact with each other as they drink it. So it's just trying to put a stamp in the community. So we try very hard to put that positive vibe out to anybody that comes through the door. In the daytime, you can bring your kids here. They feel at home. In the evening time, you can come and you know feel safe, have a good meal, have an excellent drink, and go home hammered and full. <laughs> Stephen, how did you find this place? Well, this young man who uh, I met uh, a little while ago, he uh, told me about his restaurant. He told me to come on by. I stopped by and I fell in love with the atmosphere. I fell in love with his personality and what he was doing in the community. And the food was pretty good, too. Are you a sports fan? I am a sports fan. Go Warriors. <laughs> I, I you love. You can tell you do a radio show. Say that again. <laughs> Go Warriors. Go Warriors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a sports fan. And it has about seven or eight big screens all around. And it's that sports atmosphere where you can come and enjoy the game and also have uh, a good bite to eat as well. And what do you get? I love to uh, go on their brunch on Sundays. That's my favorite time. But when I go and watch a game in the evenings, I, I love chicken wings. I'm a chicken wing guy. <laughs> they have these catfish sliders that are delicious. And they put a piece of fish between some bread, and the fish is cooked uh, tenderly, and it's cooked with good seasoning as well. I think the chef there really knows how to season their food. Well, I think my favorite part was actually the wings. So mm -hmm. I'm a granddaughter of a southern woman and oh. so I grew up eating fried chicken. So. Say that with an accent. <laughs> I grew up southern. I heard it's southern. <laughs> um, so Grammys will always be number one because mm -hmm. I'm a good granddaughter but OVO's wings were really really good. They were, good. they were really crunchy on the outside, well seasoned mm -hmm. and they were moist on the inside. So that was my actual absolute favorite part of the experience. Right. Uh, so we too went for Sunday brunch. We took friends who live in the neighborhood and we took our kiddo so we thought that mm -hmm. this is definitely approachable and very casual. A family spot. Yeah so for brunch at least it, it's fine to bring kids to. And and so a couple people got the buffet. I ordered the shrimp and grits, uh, and that was my second favorite part of uh, the experience. And what about you, Sam? Well, for starters, I had the OVO crab cakes, and I really enjoyed it for the reason that they <coughs> actually use real lumps of crab meat. Wow. And what I really enjoyed the most was their sun-dried tomato aioli. It just hit the right spot as a starter. And then for later for entrees, I had the OVO macaroni and cheese. Hey. And I can hey. tell you, <laughs> first of all, the presentation is beautiful. It comes in a black cast iron yes. um, casserole dish. Mm -hmm. And then it had a white cheddar sauce. And I was not expecting the bacon in it. Uh, the bacon right, that was right. laced through it, it was rendered and it was crispy and smoky. I mean, I'm not a big macaroni and cheese fan, but I will go back there just for <laughs> macaroni and cheese. But one of the things that I found really entertaining there, it was Tavern Tuesday. Right. And on Tavern Tuesday, they have unlimited meat tacos yes. for $2, $5 margaritas. There was a DJ in the middle of the floor, 
and it was karaoke night. Yeah. Yes, it was karaoke. <laughs> night. Karaoke tacos and margaritas. Yes. yes. JB rhythm oh. is. Yes, <laughs> and it was R and B music. It brought me. It was nostalgic. It brought me back to my middle school gymnasium at the wow. school dance, and I couldn't stop moving my shoulders because because <laughs> everyone wants to. <laughs> yeah, to middle right. school. Don't we all want to go back? <laughs> I, I, well, for her, it wasn't very long ago. <laughs> right, so. right. Right. <laughs> but it was definitely nostalgic. It, I definitely had a great time. <laughs> and what about your experience outside? Outside of the food? Outside of the food, it was uh, a little interesting. I think um, they kind of just missed the mark a lot um, on different operational points. The biggest one that I experienced was that when we were seated, we weren't given a menu. Mm. The server, he was super nice. Mm -hmm. He explained that we could either do the buffet or we could order a la carte items. And um, he gave the price for the buffet, um, but then we had to ask like, well, what's on the a la carte items? And I think it made us kind of confused mm -hmm. to go um, and try and order on the fly. Well, it's it's a it's a neighborhood place, you know, and yeah. they're, they're very home homey and very warm and very, you know, nice people. And they'll serve you whatever you really want, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, uh, I don't need the menu because I know the menu by <laughs> heart. But um, I also love their braised oxtails. Ooh. And so when I tried them the first time, I fell in love with the oxtails. They're so tender. And then they have this great... I love gravy over them, and I think anybody who tries these oxtails, if you're an oxtail person, you're going to love these oxtails. They're delicious. And if you're not an oxtail person? You're still going to love these oxtails. Don't <laughs> be converted. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stephen, your spot. Wrap it up for us. OVO, a great place to go Friday night for karaoke, Sunday for brunch, and any time for a Warriors game. <laughs> All right, and Marley? I wouldn't recommend it based on our kind of operationals or service experience, but if you do find yourself there, Get those fried wings. Yeah. Those are really good. <laughs> all right, and Sam. I guess I was fortunate enough because the service I got was great all around. So I would say phenomenal service, wow. good old comfort food, and who doesn't like karaoke on a <laughs> school day? <Week> night. <laughs> <laughs> all right, if you would like to try OVO Tavern and Eatery, it's located on Martin Luther King Jr. Way between West and 53rd in Oakland. The telephone number is 510-922-8082. It's open for dinner Tuesday through Saturday with brunch on Sundays. Reservations are accepted and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $20. The retro chic tiki trend is taking over bars across America. But here in the Bay Area, we have history with guys like this. The iconic Trader Vic dates to 1937 and Tonga Room at the Fairmont San Francisco to 1945. Even though tiki bars lost favor in the decades after, the concept is being reinvigorated with places like Smuggler's Cove, a San Francisco destination for those in the know. The original idea of bringing the feel of the South Pacific and Caribbean to California came in 1934 when Don the Beachcomber opened his place in LA. This lounge gave birth to whimsical tiki decor, such as thatched roofs, carved masks, Polynesian food, and fruity rum drinks. This succulent Caribbean-made plantation pineapple rum or the local Humboldt distillery spiced rum will put you in the tiki spirit. Go on, don your Hawaiian shirt and lay and suck down a good rum bowl. It's all good. Tucked away from the bustling street, Sam's tasteful Turkish pick is owned by two Kurdish brothers. Here, genuine flavors are served up in beautifully ornate silver and copper ware. In Palo Alto, step into Anatolian Kitchen. I met my wife here in Anatolian Kitchen. She was working as a hostess, and then we met, and then we got married. So I guess you have to be careful who you're hiring, right? My wife, she's Turkish and I'm Kurdish. We really have a different understanding to each other sometimes because the culture differences. Rojbash, my name is Dino Tekdemir. I am owner of Anatolian Kitchen. I came to the U.S. from a city called Diyarbakir, southeast of Turkey, Kurdish area. I'm Kurdish. I start from janitor, dishwasher, busser, server, and finally manager. So after nine years, I saved my own money and I finally decided to open my own restaurant, my own dream. My brother, he was cooking back home in Turkey. When he came in 2007, he was cooking with me. 
the recipe actually the food exactly what we're eating at home like mother cook in Turkey we use very uh, selective ingredients it's very hard to find around here but that makes it very special and very unique I'm usually in the front uh, doorman greeting people welcoming them hugging them so because everybody knows me around here they know my story a lot of people and they come here I just it's like guest come to your home Şerefe. This place has a real international flair, doesn't it? This restaurant is family owned. So the two brothers, it's owned by two brothers. And so all the dishes that you guys tried, it's actually from their home in Turkey. So I would say it's a mix between Kurdish and Turkish style food. But ironically, my favorite dish is called the Alexander favorite. Mm. Cubes of bread, and it is soaked in butter. And laying on top of it is these thinly sliced rotisserie meat it's surrounded by an island of what I call togurt sauce because it's a mix between this tangy orange tomato sauce with thick yogurt. Mm -hmm. It is just really great, especially because I'm a dipping person. I love <laughs> taking the bread that they have make in-house and dipping them and making little sandwiches out of them. Right. I ordered the lamb shanks and I also ordered the combo grill. Mm, cool. Oh. Yeah. All right, tell me about them both. Don't tease me. Okay, Don't well let me start. Me. Let me start me. with the lamb shake. The lamb shank was very tender, very mm. tasty, and it was on a bed of orzo pasta, mm. I believe, mm -hmm. and it was really, really good. I love that, but when they brung the combo grill out, uh, it had chicken on skewers, chicken kebab, it had these meatballs that actually tasted like steak, mm. and, and the chef came out, and they were so attentive to us. This is one of my uh, mm -hmm. things I loved about this dining experience. Mm. The chef came out, and he talked to us, asked us, you know, uh, what we liked, and he just really, really gave us that care that I think that is important in a great dining experience. Mm -hmm. We had a great time. We took friends who had recently been to Istanbul, and so we thought they were good picks to come along to see how authentic it would be. And I think everyone raved about it mm -hmm. in our group. It's my, why I wore my whirling dervish shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I've been to Turkey. <laughs> so Alexander's favorite was also my personal favorite mm -hmm. of the night too. But another thing that um, I had was called the Monty. <gasps> oh. Yes, the dumpling, the yeah. meat spice dumpling. So so they kind of likened to an Italian tortellini, mm -hmm. and they had seasoned meat inside a little nestled pocket of really tender pasta. Mm -hmm. It was served with the really light yogurt sauce with some nice herbs. And when you ate one of those, it kind of burst in your mouth, mm -hmm. and I loved it. It was like a little flavor explosion, and um, that really was a great new taste mm -hmm. for me. The hospitality right. was mm -hmm. above and beyond. Mm -hmm. I don't expect a chef to come out or an owner to come out. They were so good at guiding you, mm -hmm. you know, gently through the menu and showing you what things you may like or you may not. Like. I thought that was, that was really, really classy for right. them. Mm -hmm. They have, um, I don't know if you guys saw, but there was a lot of cultural artifacts oh, yeah. Yeah. in the room. And it almost felt like it. I'd never been to Turkey, okay? But if I ever went to Turkey, that gave me a great glimpse of what it could be like. Yes. Right. And it wasn't mm -hmm. overdone with the decor. It wasn't like right. tchotchke overload. Right. Um, and so I appreciated that. I did wonder if any of you guys got dessert. We did. I did. Okay. <laughs> I I got you dessert. Dessert. <laughs> well, I had the baklava. Yeah. Yes. It, it was it was good. I, I wish I would have had it straight out of the oven or, mm. or however huh. they cooked it. It, it in a little little cold, not not as warm as I thought it, it mm. should be, but it was delicious. The chocolate and the flaky uh, crust was mm. really good. And, and like I said, they were so nice to me. They could have fed me anything and I probably would have <laughs> enjoyed it. <laughs> and what did you have for dessert, Marley? We had that also and loved it. It was really flavorful mm. and wonderful. Mm. But we had a new experience with the kunif, kunefi. I don't know how to pronounce That's it correctly. Right. Don't worry. So this dessert lends itself more on the savory side. Mm -hmm. And when it came out, it looks like a flattened bird's nest. Um, and really what it is though, is really thin strips of phyllo dough. Mm. But inside is some cheese mm. that's really mild yeah. flavor, oh, wow. but a very traditional dish. Yeah. A very mm -hmm. traditional, authentic mm -hmm. dish. Right. I always get the baklava. The filo dough, it's so thin and it's so 
buttery and embedded in those feel each sheet I can taste fragrant honey <laughs> and yep. I love that they do mm -hmm. not scrimp on the nuts because yeah. they you felt like you were actually getting dry pistachio nuts and it was crunchy mm -hmm. and it's just so yummy and I always recommend people get the baklava. All right, this is your spot. Wrap it up for us, Sam. All right, if you want to go for a cultural experience, great food, meat galore, and just great atmosphere, come to Antonia's Kitchen. And Marley? I think uh, it was a great first impression of Turkish food, and I'm excited to try more Turkish food over time. And Stephen? Romantic, sexy, good, great <laughs> service. I'd recommend anybody to go. All righty, if you would like to try Anatolian Kitchen, it's located on Bird Street at Cambridge in Palo Alto. Telephone number is 650-853-9700. It's open every day for lunch and dinner. Reservations are recommended. And the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I want to thank my guests on this week's show. Marley Stevens, whose designer approved spot, pleases both the eye and the palate in San Francisco at Farmhouse Kitchen. Stephen Parker took up his favorite local haunt, a lively place for community and good vibes at OVO Tavern and Eatery in Oakland. And Sam Mui, who shows us Middle Eastern flavors with a sprinkle of Asian influence in Palo Alto at Anatolian Kitchen. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check Please Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco and I'll see you then. Cheers. So now it's your turn. We want to hear from you if you visited any of our Check Please restaurants. You can post a selfie on Instagram, join the conversation on Facebook, and tweet us anytime. And don't forget to visit our website. All the shows are there, along with my wine videos and notes about the wines we drink on set. You'll also find our fun new web series, Taste This, where we celebrate food and drinks around the Bay. Cheers. Check Please Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Total Wine & More offers over 8,000 wines, 2,500 beers, and 3,000 spirits with specialists on hand to provide advice on any item. Now open in Mountain View, Pleasant Hill, in Fremont. La Tour Angel Artisan Oils, French-inspired and handcrafted in Northern California. La Tour Angel creates natural, healthy cooking oils that add new flavor to everyday dishes. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. At Adeline and Ashby in Berkeley. Online at sleepworks.com. Natural and engineered stone. Designer tiles. IRG has over 250 choices and 10,000 slabs. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin. And at marblecompany.com.